Oh, hey there. Welcome to my $2,600 Ocean View apartment. Come on in. The first space you step into is my kitchen. I've got some storage space right here that I mainly use to house my cleaning supplies and spiders instead of food. This store over here, well this store sucks, don't worry about this store. Okay, okay, this door's for my heater, but I won't open it because mystery. So for my actual kitchen, I have a lot of counter space that I take full advantage of, which means I don't clean up very well. I have two windows above a fairly large sink, I think. I don't know sink sizes. I don't have any plans to add a curtain or shades because living in California means I have to be conscientious of my utility use and keep the lights off. I get really great natural light through this bad boy. Nothing too fancy beyond that. Bunch of cabinets with a bunch of stuff in them. And I also have my bullet that I use to make my protein shakes. And I had an air fryer that I used religiously, but I broke that sucker moving here. PSA, don't put them in your trunk. Last neat thing is this double tiered rollout circular pot and pan holder. This is so freaking cool. I don't use it necessarily all that often, but it's like the Lego Death Star. You don't use it all the time, but when you have guests over, you can absolutely show them how badass it is. Next up is this hallway transition area where there's not a whole lot going on. That's what she said. I'd like to add some like wall art and a secondary monitor setup when I get bored of the one in my bedroom. I'd like to have a nice background to film videos here while setting up a chair with a single or dual monitor, add some lights, and bam, a thousand dollars down the drain. There's also this closet that isn't really in any room technically, it's sort of just in the hallway. There's a lot of space in it that I put just randomness things and I'm sure there's tons of spiders in it, but it's there when I need it. This is the last part of the house that has this like weird wooden aesthetic look. I'm not a huge fan of, but I don't really have a choice and I can try to match the rest of this house with the aesthetic. Stretch my creative muscle a bit, we'll see. If we take a right at the end of the hallway, we'll reach a door that leads to my upstairs neighbors. And to the right is the guest bathroom. Probably, and I can't stress this enough, the most clean room in my entire apartment. I don't even go in here. You might think that having two bathrooms might convince you to indulge in alternating poop spots, but this is in fact not the case. Sorry to break some hearts. The next room through my guest bathroom is the washer slash dryer slash storage area. I don't have much use for this space beyond washing and drying my clothes. One, because I can't reach anything, but I am thankful I have my own units that are newish and work perfectly. Minus that damn music whenever a load finishes. I don't know why I don't get cool music when I finish a load. Backing out of that area, we'll take a left this time into my storage room. This room sucks. I hate this room. I'd rather shower with socks on and then go to sleep in my bed with the socks still on than go in this room. Nothing too fancy. It's large enough to house all my extra things. I put bins and then some just absolute randomness strewn about. But why this sucks so much is because I hate spiders and this is like the casting room for arachnophobia too. They're hanging from the ceilings, crawling around the floors, on the walls, everywhere, man. I refuse to go in here at night. I only go in here during the day if it's a life or death situation, like if I need like my phone charger or a plunger. Moving back into the kitchen area, there's a connecting granite counter behind the stove that serves as a guest area to sit and drink slash eat. I don't have bar stools, but I would imagine they'd fit in between these things. This area also has a window, but I usually keep it closed. Now that I think about it, this window would be the absolute worst spot to see a face in at night. So to not put myself in that situation, it stays closed. Adding to what is already being chalked up as the worst space in the apartment, this is the only part of the apartment that creaks when I walk, and not that you could hear it now, but I don't know what's underneath. It's hollow and it's very, very loud. The biggest room in my whole apartment, the living room. While I don't consider myself a minimalist, I do consider myself broke. I'm not very old and I did inherit an old family fortune. So 
What I have is what I have. I recently bought this couch and matching accent chair at Ashley's furniture store. It came with a couple of matching black throw pillows that I use as pillows, blankets, or my occasional therapist. Behind the couch are two windows that I keep closed during the weekday, but typically have open during the weekend, minus this video, because the natural light is just too good not to take advantage of. I do also plan to get rid of these shades. I'm no interior decorator, I know, shocker, but I'd like something a little less white and sparkly, too much to ask for. My upstairs neighbors, being as kind as they are, donated me this coffee table, which I have taken full advantage of, and I actually enjoy it very much. It does its job in allowing me a place to put my food, snacks, books, laptop, and feet on occasion. Beyond the couch area, the rest of the living room is <laughs> fairly empty, save for these Walmart bookshelves I turn sideways and use to house my Xbox and various time wasters. Where is my Xbox, you might ask? The spider room. So now I don't have an Xbox. These shelves were here when I moved in and like the aesthetic of the wood pieces earlier in the video, this just doesn't mesh well with the style that I have. And not that I have a style, I'm a guy, but still they're kind of gross. I use it to shelve my books and house other things I don't really have a home for. Something really cool though are these old eight and a half by 11 inch posters from Apple depicting various innovators throughout history. I grew up an Apple fan and I grew up in an Apple household. So my inspiration being Steve Jobs for as many flaws as he had, he will always and has always been my inspiration for creativity and thus I keep these around. Finally, one of the worst parts of the living room you might have noticed is this closet that has a reflective mirror surface. Why anybody in their right mind thought this was a good or even moderately decent idea is truly, and I mean truly, beyond me. When I have people over, the only thing I hear about is how creepy it is to see themselves from top to bottom eating food or watching a movie the entire time. The only real place that this would be a problem is where I have the accent chair, so unless someone that isn't me is snuggling with their significant other, it only affects one person at most at any given time. Inside the closet is just storage space. I don't really use it for much else. It has lines for clothes to be hung up and I again ask myself why in my right mind would I get out of my bedroom, walk across my kitchen, into my living room to pick out anywhere from simple clothes to coats. So odd. The absolute best feature of my living room and honestly of the entire apartment are these floor to ceiling windows and sliding door that lead to a giant private patio. The view is just breathtaking, and honestly, I spend so many hours just staring out across Orange County. I spend as much time meditating and reflecting out here as possible. Beyond the perfect view, the patio offers enough space for a whole outdoor setup with ample electrical outlets to support lighting and even grilling if I so desire. But the electrical outlets don't work, so, you know, they're there for show for now. Being my frugal, sometimes not so frugal self, I only have a stool out here. That's all I really need too. Just my stool and nurture for my chronic back problems to come. At one end are stairs leading up to my neighbor's patio, which from the little I've seen is even more spacious and offers an even better view. And on the other end is just a walkway across the front side back of my apartment so I can go straight from my car to my patio without setting foot in my apartment. I also forgot to mention the second door by my couch is just an alternate way to get into the apartment for what I'm guessing is a convenience thing for guests to walk into the living room rather than the kitchen. And if I didn't make this clear about my patio before, I eat out here, watch movies, work, relax, talk to friends and family, drink, cry and laugh. It's my physical manifestation of peace, my happy place. Last but not least, my bedroom. The room actually starts here, but opens up into a hallway. To the left is my personal bathroom, and I will find stock footage, but I cannot show you that atrocious state that I submit that room to. Trust me, it's bad. Not too bad. Kinda worse than you're thinking, but not as bad as you might think. Yeah. My bedroom itself drops elevation a couple of steps, same as the living room, and is even more spacious than I could have imagined. I have a college setup of a bed, I know, 
against a wall that supports no outlets, so my phone is never 100% charged. I'm living on the edge, what a rebel, I know, I know. Over to my workspace, I bought a rising desk from Office Depot over a year ago, and it's one of the best purchases I've ever made. When I first moved in and I didn't have any chairs or furniture for the foreseeable future, I was able to raise the height and work standing up, no problem. My chair situation, as you can see, is a sad little sight. I bought this chair from Walmart in the outdoor section. I originally had it out on the patio and used the stool that was shown earlier in the video at my desk, but my back started to hurt more than I was comfortable with and ultimately swapped them out and put a pillow underneath so that I could sit on this chair without any back pain. And it's worked out so far, except when it doesn't work out. Super minimalist life hack. Save money on buying a chair and just use a pillow you already have in your own home. It's 10 out of 10 when it's not three out of 10. My desk consists of a wide monitor, not sure how wide anymore, and a Mac mini computer coupled with a loggy. Logi, Logi, keyboard and mouse. Also, you can see this ridiculous wall outlet. Who decided that was a good place to put a wall outlet? Utter ridiculousness. I have an ant light that I've kept with me since college. It's a functional light that offers different light variations based on mood. It also has a USB outlet and swivels, which I think is pretty cool. And you can also increase and decrease the brightness for each mood. This light is honestly one of the only things I still have from my college experience, besides my degree. And I don't even know where that's at. Next to that is a fake ass plant. And beyond that, I've had this framed quote for several years now that I keep in constant view while I work at my desk. I've read it before on my channel, so I won't read it again, but it's called Life and it's by Scott F. Fitzgerald. It's probably, arguably, one of my most favorite strings of words put together ever. Finally, the newest addition to my desk area is the all too infamous light panels. I bought my triangle set at Best Buy and while pricey, I think it does provide the needed motion and color to my setup that was lacking. Apparently you can sync it with music too, which I think is dope. I wonder if it syncs to my porn, I mean, I mean my cool horn playlist. I hope you didn't skip this part, but if you did, I know what caught your eye and it's this giant ass mirror. I urged my neighbors to move it as gracious as I was for it. I didn't want it in general and least of all places didn't want it in my bedroom. But they insisted it stay put as it's been with the family for generations and traveled from Italy all the way to Orange County when they first moved here. It's a pretty cool story, I guess. I'll continue to live with this monster for now. Like my bathroom, my closet is no bueno. Meaning my floor, which is carpeted through the entire apartment, is also carpeted in there, but now it has layers and layers and layers of clothes, both clean and dirty, who knows now? I'm a lazy dude, so forgive. Just look at this stock footage and think, wow, I'm sure his is somewhat like this. I bet it's even got clothes hanging up and maybe a pair of shoes or a suitcase stored somewhere. Finally, the last part are the windows that open up to the patio and even has a sliding door as well if I just wanted to step outside as soon as I get out of bed or take a break from working at my desk. That is the end of the video. That is every room in my apartment, every interesting thing, every facet I could cover, we covered it. So for some of the juicier details, again, in the title, it says $2,600, but in actuality, it's $2,400 per month. And then there's a fixed rate for utilities, which means that I pay the same amount for utilities each month, no matter the usage, which is kind of both good for anybody that would live here, but more specifically for me, because I leave the lights on, I leave the water running, uh, the AC is constantly on, so I'm sure I'm probably receiving more benefit than my landlords are. With that being said, it's $185 flat rate for utilities each month, so it comes out to a total of $25.85, which I just rounded up $15 to make the, the title nice. And so it's $2,600, give or take. Not really, kinda, you know. So a question I get asked a lot by my friends and people that have visited this apartment is why I would pay so much when there are other alternatives out there. And I've always had a very bad experience with the apartments that I've lived in. I've always chose the cheapest option, which is not necessarily the best option. There were safety issues, health issues, and eventually that led me to just say, screw it, I'm gonna pay a premium or what most would consider a premium to live in a nicer, safer environment. And at this point in time, I moved in in April, it's now October, I don't really feel comfortable in this lifestyle. It's my margins based off of what I make versus what I spend and have to pay out of my pocket expense-wise. 
I can't keep going on like this, so I will probably have to transition to a cheaper alternative. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you haven't already, like, subscribe, turn notifications on, DM me on Instagram. And if you guys wanna see more of this, leave your suggestions in the comments and I will see you all in the next video. Take care consistently.